Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to the studio on this soon-to-be holiday weekend. Where is everybody doing? Y'all heading out and about? Did the loan come through? You could fill up all your toys and you can go play. <laughs> me, I'm going to be staying here um, and working on that thing behind me. But hey, I enjoy it, so why not? I may head to the coast next weekend when everybody's gone. I don't know when it happened, but I turned into an old man along the way. But hey, <sighs> solitude, there's something to be said about that. Well, how is everybody doing? Hopefully we won't have to have them uh, forward over the uh, the messages in the chat. Is anybody out there yet? Because I don't see anything on my, my feed. Certainly there's somebody out there. Are y'all there? Hank, can you see anything? Are you there? We may uh, end up having to do it like we did last time, and they'll have to send me your questions in Skype. So while they are sorting that out, let's see whatever. Uh... Yep, can see in here. Well. I can't see the questions on uh, my chat. Oh, nope. Rides like Nacho. So it is working this week. So life is good. But let's go ahead and start off with anything I may have missed last week. Ray Lanzer had asked me, I keep trying to bleed the brakes on my 2019 Honda Rancher and the brakes keep feeling cushy and soft. Any suggestions? Hmm. I wonder, have you bedded in your brakes yet? I mean, is it just the lever or the, uh, you didn't say if it was front or rear. Um, is it just that the bike, uh, the machine isn't slowing down or the brakes aren't grabbing? Because if you put on new pads and you're also bleeding, which is a great thing to do. And I advise that for you know, any time you do any brake service. But um, your pads, they kind of have to bed in. They're kind of like breaking in a you know, set of rings or something like that. Uh, that would be the equivalent. So until they get bedded in, they're going to seem a little bit glossy. I, I guess that's the best way to explain it. They're, they're just not going to grab really as hard as they, they will. So put them through a couple of heat cycles, and that should straighten it out. Um, other than that, if you're having trouble just bleeding, using just using... Uh, the, uh, the master, you may want to invest in a, a vacuum. That way you know you're pulling uh, pulling the fluid out. So, but I would I would try bedding them in first to make sure that they just aren't grabbing it because they're new. <laughs> wrong plastics on the YXZ? Yeah, I did put on, on the wrong plastics. What do you think, Tracy? You like that? <laughs> Patrick had asked me, what types of antifreeze or coolant can you use in your motorcycle? Well, you want to make sure that you're using motorcycle specific, and it definitely needs to be a, a type of fluid that is um, aluminum friendly, because just about every motorcycle I know of all have aluminum heads, aluminum uh, radiators, and there's some plastic mixed in there as well. I would not recommend using you know just regular Prestone like you would use uh, in your in your car, uh, the green stuff. It's not really designed to work in a power sports environment. But there's several out there, and you can't go wrong by, by using the manufacturer's uh, own line, whether it be Honda, Honda Oils, or Yamalube, or you know Kawasaki Oils, whatever you know the Kawasaki coolant. And uh, I'd say go to or go with the manufacturer because hey, they design their system or they design their different cooling systems around that fluid, or vice versa, the fluid for their uh, their system. Ronald Smith had asked me, my 2012 Honda Rancher 420 won't start. The neutral light is on, flashing on the dash instrument cluster will crank, but will not start. What do I check? Whew. Okay. Keep it simple. Go to the spark plug first. Go ahead and pull it, do a spark plug check, make sure it's firing. Next, make sure you're getting fuel. Um, I would be curious if you say the, uh, the, it's flashing on the instrument cluster, which, which lighter are you talking about there? 
but you know, take it back to basics. Check your spark first. And then uh, if you've got a gauge to check your fuel pressure, go for that next. Should be around 46, if I, uh, 46 PSI, if I remember correctly, for the, the Honda Rancher. After those two things, yeah, you may need to look into the uh, the diagnostics on the, uh, the display itself. It may be trying to tell you something by those uh, certain number of flashes or any codes that may be popping on up on it. Let's see. All right, we got a couple of questions. Uh, we'll let it build up a little bit more. I would I would guess today is going to be a light day. So I would imagine a lot of people are traveling today going on their extended weekend, 4th of July plans. And that's okay. That means I can get to work on that even sooner. <laughs> 70 acres up north off grid had asked me, having trouble removing the petcock on my 2003 Honda 400EX. Any idea why it's not coming off easy? All right. If you're referring to the uh, the two Phillips head screws, yeah, sometimes those can be a little tricky. Just make sure you're using a JIS standard number two um, Phillips and not just a regular Phillips because there is a difference. Uh, the JIS is the Jap Japanese industry standard spec for the the, uh, the Phillips head, and it's it's a little bit different angle than uh, just a regular old U.S. type uh, number two screwdriver. Now, if you're referring to it actually pulling out of the tank, since it is an older machine, chances are it could be gummed up on the inside because basically you've got the, the petcock base and then up inside of there is the tube roughly, roughly about that long. And over that tube is just a fine, let's call it a, a mesh strainer. And if, it's th if things have gotten gooped up down there and you've got some sediment in the bottom, that hole that that, uh, that tube is fitting up inside. There's not a lot of clearance there. So chances are it is probably gooped up and doesn't want to release. Um, just be careful if you're prying on it because this is plastic and chances are it's going to break if you push on, if you push on it too much. Um, I assume that your tank is off the machine and is, and is empty. You may want to put something in the tank to uh, break down that sediment. Uh, one of the best things I've ever used to uh, break down that it's almost like a, uh, a syrup is uh, acetone. Um, pour it in that side of the tank, leave it on its side, let it sit for, I don't know, a few hours, and then that should break it free. <clears throat> Kerm is asking me, John, my good man, what are your thoughts on a 2004 CR85R? Often should I be changing the top end, not racing, only a little, uh, little farm use? You shouldn't really have to go after it that often. I mean, um, I used to run you know, motocross, two-stroke motocross bikes back in the day for days on end. I had an 81 CR125. I love that machine. I wish I still had it. And you can start to feel the engine when it's uh, ready for a new set of rings. It, it will just lose some of its pep. And it usually does that in a fairly rapid rate. Um, you don't run it until the point it won't start anymore because it doesn't have enough compression. But you can tell when the when the zip is uh, has left the building, and uh, that's usually a telltale sign. Hey, I need to at least put another set of rings in it. Um, shoot, I used to change out uh, rings in between motos just to make sure I had the uh, the most uh, the most ready to ride, ready to run machine that you could have. Hey, that's when life was simple. No power valves, no nothing, just the uh, Piston in a cylinder. <laughs> the smell of two-stroke oil burning. Ah, memories. Ah, I get grief, I'm old. All right, one more from last week. Robert Thoreau. Hmm. Hi, John. Great videos, all of them. Well, thank you, Robert. Very informative. My question is, I have a 2010 Honda Rancher TRX 420 FE. So that's a four-wheel drive electric shift. And it's spitting and sputtering and idles too fast for me hmm. because when I shift it jerks really hard and I was told the, the IACV is bad with IAVC installed or not at all it's still idles exactly the same why is that I'm trying to find out if it's bad or not well I think you just did um, if the idle air control valve that's what he's referring to that's what it does <laughs> it, it it controls the the, uh, the idle 
uh, the amount of air that is get, getting pumped through basically your throttle body um, when it's at idle. And if it doesn't work, it's doing what you're describing. So I would think that you uh, have already diagnosed it and going to replace it. I don't think you have to do any programming on that when you do it. It should be a plug and play scenario on that. All right, we got some questions lining up yet? A couple. Uh, Brad's like Nacho. Thanks for the rebuild videos. You're very welcome. Luis Agudo. Saludos. Salute to you as well. Kerm. Um, oh, uh, I think I already answered this. this uh, he's asking again. Dear John, how many hours should I change piston on a CRF uh, 85 only used in the farm, farm field use? As I said before, if you're not in race conditions, go ahead and run it. Um, you'll know when it starts to lose a little bit of zip and uh, go ahead and replace it. How many hours is that? I think you're in the 20 to 25 range. I think uh, I think you can get that much time out of one before you need to do something. Joshua White, I have a 1999 400DX with a TRX, wow, 450R carburetor. How'd you do that? I have it running. Um, I had it running before, went to adjust the valves the next morning, and it wouldn't even try to start any ideas. Wow. I'm surprised uh, that you got a 450 carb to, to, uh, to mate up to that. So, whew, that is a lot of carb for that particular engine, and uh, you're definitely going to be uh, jetting, it, jetting it down, so to speak, you know, because that, that is a big breathing, uh, big breathing piece of equipment there. I find it weird that you went to, that you adjusted the valves and then it wouldn't even start. Are we sure we got those valves right? Sure they're not a little too tight. I know that we've got a uh, it's an older video, but uh, I did the valve adjustment on a 400 EX. You may want to go back and and reference that one. Um, is it 0 0.01 millimeters? for the intake and the exhaust hell i can't remember but um go back and look at the playlist for our 400 ex and i can walk you through um you know setting the valve clearance on that just just to make sure you did it right rides like nitro what's the best stuff to clean out an old uh an old fuel tank well there's a couple of um different kits that they make out there i can't remember the name of it i, I want to call it clean strip or strip clean where they've got a, a cleaning um, solution that you put in the tank along with some nuts and bolts and shake it around, dump it out. But then they want you to coat the inside of it. I do not recommend that you do that. I only use that the cleaning part of that kit. The, that, uh, that sealing kit is that white plasticky looking, plastic dip looking stuff. And invariably, it, it doesn't seal or it doesn't adhere very well, especially to a rusted tank, which it is supposed to do. And then it inevitably gets pulled into your carburetor or fuel injection system. But um, that that's what uh, I can't remember the name of that stuff, though. But if you didn't want to invest in that, if you've just got that gummy looking crud in the bottom of it, believe it or not, um, acetone, that will that will eat that stuff up. It takes it a little while, but uh, I, I brought back a jet ski that had, oh, good gosh. And been sitting for something like 10, 12 years, and it just had this lower level of sludge. And it took a, a few rotations and a lot of shaking, but uh, acetone eventually broke it down and got it cleaned out. And uh, that really worked well. Joshua White, that's the video I followed. Well, it should be right then. I wonder if there is an issue with the uh, that carb then. If you're sure you've got the uh, the valves adjusted right, the only other thing you changed was the carb, and something something may have happened uh, in regards to it. To make sure you've got fuel still pumping through that. I'm pretty sure that one has a pumper circuit on the side of it, so you should be able to pop the throttle and looking down inside the uh, the, the venturi itself, and you should see it spray if it actually has float in the bowl, uh, fuel in the bowl. Toker Pro 420. <laughs> Hi, John. I have a 2014 Yamaha Viking. Okay. About 40 mi 45 minutes into every ride, a squeal develops. When I try to stop and listen, the squeal goes away. Any tips? Thanks. Hmm. That would lead me toward the, uh, the CV belt, uh, constant velocity uh, sheave system, the belt itself. 
sounds like it's uh, maybe glazing up that belt and making it squeal. So I would, I would tend to run that direction. Pull that outer cover off and see if you've got any glazing built up on the sheaths. And we do have a video that walks through to, to look for different problems on, the, uh, on a CVT type clutch system, which is what yours has actually has a secondary clutch internal as well. But that's the one that's going to be squeaking is the, uh, the outside, outside system. Look for glazing on there. Um, it's, it's almost like a glass. It'll have a shiny look to it. And then um, look on the belt itself, see if there is <coughs> any spots where it may have uh, glazed the belt as well. Maybe time for another one, depending on how many hours you have. But anyway, any rate, that video I'm referring to, it'll walk you through what to look for on a CVT system. Mike has asked me, what would you recommend for maintenance on a 450 race bike? If memory serves, the, um, the schedule that they have from the manufacturer is usually pretty accurate in regards to valve adjustment. And often you need to go through and uh, maybe uh, put in new rings. But the, the four strokes now are just worlds better as far as maintenance go. Um, the only thing you really need to keep up with on, the, uh, on a 450 is uh, mainly your clutch system and your oil. So I would say every race, after every race, well, every race weekend, dump out the oil. Because, I mean, what are you talking about? A, a quart, two quarts max here? Um, but follow their schedule. It's uh, in the owner's manual, and it's usually pretty damn, pretty damn accurate. All right. Babewa GA415. Hey, John, I have a 99 Honda TRX 400EX. And that is such a popular machine. Love it. And at wide open throttle, my bike stalls out. What could it be? Hmm. It sounds to me like your float level may be a little bit low and it's starving itself for fuel when you've got the throttle all the way down and it's pulling maximum volume. I mean, uh, your float level, it should be just about dead even with the float bowl actually mounts to the base of the carburetor. I, I think that's where it should be on the 400 EX as well. Use a, uh, a clear tube off the, uh, off the drain, open up the drain, pull the tube up and see where that level shows up. Sounds like it's a little bit low to me. Troy took a pro. Thanks. You, well, you're welcome. Troy is asking me, John, in your experience, which manufacturer is the best part support supply chain for watercraft or wave runners specifically? I'm looking to acquire a pair this summer and prefer mid nineties. Happy fourth. Okay. So you're wanting to get a little bit older machine, mid nineties. I had both. Um, I can't, I can't remember. No, I had a, a 95 Raider 700 and also had a 98, um, 900 STX. That was a Kawasaki for those two models for me personally, the Yamaha. It, it calls the, the least amount of problems and shoot, that thing ran until the day I sold it. And good gosh, we had it for like 15, 20 years. And it was just the most dependable ski I've ever owned without a doubt. So I'm, I'm going to have to tip my hat to the, uh, uh, the Yamaha side of the, of the equation. Cause let's face it, there's really only two players. I would not get a Polaris. I think they had a couple of units out, uh, during that time period. Just don't go there. <laughs> Mike Turner, I've got an 01 400 EX that won't start. Uh oh, check the fuse, test a battery, and solenoid. I used to have a green light when I'm in neutral. Now I don't even have that. Why am I not, what am I not looking at? All right, well, it sounds like either A, it may have a problem with the, uh, the, the neutral sensor, and that is a wire on the back side that shows when the machine's in neutral, or it could be the, uh, the clutch actuation uh, uh, switch on it. So I would go look at those two, those two points of interest, because I think it is going to be centered around that, uh, that neutral light not lighting up. Although you may want to get a test light and make sure that the light is not lying to you. I've, I've chased that rabbit before. So Check your bulb, make sure it's working correctly, and then go after that neutral switch and or your clutch switch. By uh, yeah, GF415. Oh, thank you, John. Well, you're very welcome. 
Um, I can't even pronounce that name. Hi, how are you associated with Partzilla Online Store? I work for them. I work for the uh, the parent company called Outdoor Network. My official title, Project Engineer. If you would have told me I was going to do how-to videos 10 years ago, I would have said you were crazy. Because you know what my number one fear is? Public speaking. <laughs> but I have no problem talking to a camera. What does that say about me? I'm not quite sure. Hmm. You are welcome, Mike. Well, I've caught up with y'all in the chat. Let's jump back over to any questions I had last week. Gary Humphreys had asked me, what is a good output voltage of a rectifier on a 1999 TRX 300? I have one, you rev it up, it's putting around 18 to 19 volts at the battery. <laughs> I've been having batteries, uh, I've been having batteries not last, but maybe six months. Oh yeah, and we'll kill the battery in a few days if not ridden, pretty sure it's a bad rectifier. What do you think? I think you're absolutely right. Um, this a voltage regulator and uh, the secondary thing is re uh, rectification of the, uh, the voltage. But 18, 19 volts, that is way too high. Um, you want to be around 13.5, maybe 14. But at 18, 19, it's burning up the system. Good grief. I'm surprised I hadn't melted a wire yet. So I think you've diagnosed it already, Gary. Uh, let's get another uh, regular rectifier on that one. Oh, does that catch me up? Yep, I believe it did. So we're caught up for last week. All right, Luke McGowan, greetings from the UK. Greetings from the USA. Um, Fourth of July weekend coming up. What do y'all call that? Uh, uh, you know, what is it? Um, happy... Uh, Runaway day, or it was, I can't remember. <laughs> Greetings from the UK. It is not, is it normal for a GSXR 1000 to backfire? No. It does have a Yushamir exhaust. Could it be running rich? No, I, I would go the other, other direction. If anything, I think it's running a little bit lean, and that's what's uh, causing it to backfire. I would actually add fuel to it because she is actually pushing uh, or is less restrictive with the Yoshimura versus uh, a stock versus a stock exhaust. So I would say she needs to be tuned and depending on what year it is, well, regardless of what year it is, I know that um, I know that they have a, a kit for it where you can adjust it on the fly. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, ECU unleashed or anything like that. It's basically just a, a piggyback from uh, Dynajet that you can put on it and tune it for um, your particular setup. And they've already got maps for most of your common, you know, add-ons, whether it be a full exhaust system or just the, uh, the, the mufflers and not the headers themselves. But um, I would look into getting one of their systems and then dumping in a map and you should be good to go. But yeah, if you put on the, the exhaust system, especially a full exhaust and didn't tell the ECU what to do with it, yeah, it's, it's probably going to spit back at you. And I think it's lack of fuel. Um, Nick, when is the drawing for the Grom? Is that today already? Yep. Um, somebody responded for me. Thank you. Uh, the contest ends today and we'll be drawing shortly after that. Um, is that your BMW in the back? Uh, well, what's being done to it? Uh, thanks for all the videos you do. This weekend, I'm going to be doing the rear differential uh, CV joint boots. The inners are gone or they're, they're cracked and it's making a bit of a mess. Then at the front end, um, I've got a leak on my, fortunately, just my lower uh, oil pan gasket. So we're going to drop it out and also do a timing chain inspections. Make sure those guides are in still in good shape still. Great car, but great engine. Love the engine in this car. It's, it's the, the M5, and it's got the uh, a V8 in it. Amazing machine. But boy, you better keep up on uh, those timing chain guides and the, uh, the connector rod bearings. But the bearings are good on this one, but uh, I haven't looked at the chains in a while, so we're going to take a peek this weekend. 
Uh, <clears throat> what uh, motorcycles, cars, oh boy, <laughs> do you currently own? Okay, motorcycles, would you believe I don't own a single one? Well, I can't say that. I have two CT90s. I have a 1973 and a 1968. 68 is on the other side of the car there. Um, my son, he's got the YZF450R. Uh, that's officially his machine. Cars, okay. My daily driver is a 2018 Chevrolet Duramax 2500. Black on black on black. It looks like Darth Vader would drive it. I'd said I'd never own a black car. Now I have like three of them. <sighs> That car, uh, 2002 BMW M5, and then I have a 2000, no, it's a 1999 BMW M3, but that is a track car only. Um, it stays inside of a 24-foot white trailer and uh, gets to play uh, about every two to three months on local racetracks in the southeast. But um, is that it? Uh, that's really about it. Um, in as perks of the job, I've got access to, you know, Honda Goldwings, Razor 900S, YXZ1000R, once I put it back together, and a few other machines that I have to go test to make sure, you know, the batteries don't go dead or anything like that. <laughs> perks of the job, perks of the job. All right, guys, have I caught up with you? Is everybody going to go out and uh, have some fun this weekend? If you do, be safe. Try not to blow off any fingers like that or anything like that. Watch out out there because there's a lot of idiots and they're multiplying quickly. So just uh, be aware of your surroundings. Well, I just want to say thank you for everybody coming by and spending a little bit of time with us this afternoon here in the Partzilla studio. Everybody have a great weekend, a good holiday, a great week. And God willing, we will see you next Friday at 3. So. Y'all take care.